Santo Evangelio de nuestro Señor Jesucristo según San Juan. Entre la gente que había ido a Jerusalén a adorar durante la fiesta, habían algunos griegos. Estos se acercaron a Felipe, que era de Bexaida, un pueblo de Galilea, y le rogaron, Señor, queremos ver a Jesús. Felipe fue y le dijo a Andrés, y los dos fueron a contárselo a Jesús. Jesús le dijo entonces, ha llegado la hora en que el Hijo del Hombre va a ser glorificado. Les aseguro que si el grano no cae a la tierra, no muere. Queda él solo, pero si muere, da abundante cosecha. El que ama su vida la perderá, pero el que la desprecia su vida en este mundo la conservará para la vida eterna. Si alguno quiere servirme, que me siga. Donde yo esté, allí estará también el que me sirva. Si alguno me sirve, mi pueblo, lo, mi padre lo honrará. Siendo en este momento una gran angustia terrible, y se lo voy a decir, diré, Padre, líbrame de esta angustia, pero precisamente para esto he venido. Padre, glorifica tu nombre. Entonces se oyó una voz del cielo que decía, ya lo he glorificado y lo voy a glorificar otra vez. La gente que estaba allí escuchando decía que había sido un trueno, pero algunos afirmaban un ángel que le había hablado a Jesús. Y Jesús le dijo, no fue por mí por quien se oyó la voz, sino por ustedes. Este es el momento en que el mundo va a ser juzgado. Ahora será expulsado el que manda en este mundo. Pero cuando yo sea levantado de la tierra, atraeré a todo a mí mismo. Con eso daba a entender de qué forma había de morir. El Evangelio del Señor. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Please, amen. Please be seated. Good morning. I always considered Lent to be a weird time for me as a young girl growing up. It was the time where my family gave up meat, starting on Ash Wednesday, and including every Friday until Easter week. Special prayers were said in church, and my parents insisted that I go to confession every Saturday. How many sins does a child have? I guess I was a bit fresh, so I went to confession often. <laughs> the color purple, which happens to be one of my favorites, was everywhere in church and covered all the statues at St. Barbara's in Brooklyn, New York. That's where I grew up. Every Easter Sunday as a child meant eating lots of chocolate eggs getting a new outfit with matching shoes, hat, pocketbook, going to Moe's house. Moe was my grandma, and I couldn't say her mother in, in English or Spanish, so I would just, you know, shorten the word and say Moe. <laughs> I would go to her house for dinner, and finally watching King of Kings, on television that night with my parents. I have to admit, I was a bit in love with Jeffrey Hunter, who played Christ in the movie. 
He was gorgeous. <laughs> I was allowed to stay up past my bedtime because I had the whole week off from school. I think I focused more on the rituals of Lent and missed the part about Christ dying on the cross to forgive the sins of the world, including my own. But as a child, you only think of the superficial, not the supernatural. As I got older and more mature, Lent took on a different meaning, and I began to reflect on the passion of Christ. How could someone suffer so much pain for basically strangers, people who rejected him, and not just once, but many times? Hollywood has made countless films about the passion of Christ. Some have even made it to the Academy Awards. Many of the themes of these movies focus on the actual physicality of Jesus dying on the cross. His last words, the wailing of the women, and the cruelty of the Roman crucifixion. At that time in history, it was the common form of execution used by the Roman government. Very brutal, but efficient to those carrying out the act. There was even a Star Trek episode about Roman torture. The Enterprise, the ship, finds itself in a planet where the society uh, with, with the Roman Empire survived and it, it was entrenched in the society into the 20th century. The inhabitants of the planet rebelled against the tyranny of Rome by spreading the word of the Son and his promise of forgiveness for the sins. The episode demonstrated the cruelty of Rome on the planet's inhabitants. As all Star Trek episodes, it ends well. The captain, Kirk, tried to describe the experience of the Roman cruelty and the resistance movement of its inhabitants. It's not until the end when Lieutenant Uhura, she was the communications director, had to explain to Captain Kirk that the resistance movement was not based on the pagan principle of sun worship, sun in the sky, but that of worship of the Son of God, namely Christ. Captain Kirk then comments, Christ and Caesar, how wonderful to be part of it again. Great show, Star Trek. You can tell I'm a TV junkie. Christ's suffering on the cross was not for the glorification of the fact that he was the Son of God, a fact that Jesus would have to prove not only to his contemporaries, but also for the sins of those in future generations. Jeremiah states in the last line of the reading, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, and I will forgive their iniquity. As I read that passage, and as I'll be reading the Passion on Palm Sunday of Jesus Christ, we are reminded that the purpose of Jesus' being was to sacrifice himself for the redemption of the sins of the world. Wow, for simple people without social media, that was pretty savvy. How could the crucifixion of one man change the world forever by simply dying on the cross and resurrecting three days later? Can you imagine the TikTok views? If this had happened today, it would go viral. 
Jesus chose not to reveal himself as an all-powerful deity, like the Greek myths, Zeus throwing his thunderbolts about, scaring the bejeebas of the people on earth, or Thor, the Norse guard, swinging his hammer to vanquish his enemies. Instead, Jesus kept it low key, or as we say in New York, on the down low. As the second reading of the Hebrew states, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest. He was sent by God to become the source of eternal salvation. Jesus did it the hard way. Not having modern 21st century AI, he chose to surround himself with the marginal people in Israel at that time. Sinners, criminals, immigrants, non-Jews, poor, sick, dying, the homeless, lepers, tax collectors. We all know how we feel about the IRS on April 15th. He gave hope to those who had none taught those who hungered for something outside of themselves, healed the spirit, and not just the body, of those who were part of the marginalized society. Jesus didn't, didn't wear crowns or run around with designer clothes, jewels, and bodyguards. He never thought of himself but of others despite having doubts and fears like anyone knowing his faith. He didn't have a mega 3,000 seat stadium to hear him preach or private planes to shuffle him and the apostles back and forth all of Israel. He was fully human in not just the passion but throughout his life. He lived the Ten Commandments. How many of us can say we can do that? I know I can't. Given the choices Jesus had, can we say we would go through with the crucifixion, torture, and brutal death just to save the world from sin? Let's face it, we wouldn't. Jesus kept his promise and took on all of our iniquities unto himself. And by following him, gave us a chance of eternal salvation. Wow, what a concept. His death saved me, the sinner. Believe me, I'm not perfect. And if I follow his teachings, will give me the opportunity to enter heaven when my spirit leaves my mortal body. The message of Christ in his teachings, despite being 2,000 years old, are still applicable to life today, especially for whoever listens. Listening isn't, is not enough, but living the word and being Christ allows me to see my divinity and humanity, as it allows you to see your divinity and your humanity. It also allows for the imperfection of human beings to exist, because there, there may have been only one historical crucifixion, but when we partake of the Eucharist, we are absolved again and again and again. We are all sinners, and yes, although we are incentivized to not sin again, we ignore the lessons and give in to the temptation. In fact, I thank God for sending his only son for the continual redemption of the world, including myself. This changed my idea of the passion Despite Jesus' suffering, he made us worthy of redemption. 
And now to John's Gospel, one of my favorite Gospel writers because he's out there, sort of where I am most of the time. Ask the shop volunteers. <laughs> if you read any of John's writing, and I heartily recommend that you do, okay, uh, you'll find it, it's very interesting, but it's thought-provoking. You will notice that he takes a different approach from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John looks at Jesus from a dual perspective, God and man together. What part do we focus on? You can't separate one part, Christ's divinity, without knowing and accepting the other part, Christ's humanity. We can't say we believe in Jesus and not do the work of Jesus. When we don't accept others who may not be like us, we are not following Christ. When we put ourselves and our needs before others, we are not following Christ. When we put our trust in the ways of the world, we are not following Christ. We can go to church services every day, recite countless prayers, donate to numerous charities. But when we turn away someone in need, we are not following Christ. In the parable of the single grain mentioned in this morning's gospel, Jesus states that those who lo love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. You can't say you are a Christian without doing the work. How do we do this well? The blueprints are in the gospel. How can you understand Jesus' sacrifice without sacrificing yourself for others? That is the promise we must keep, not only during the Lenten season, but every day of our lives. The greatest love you can demonstrate is to sacrifice yourself for another. There is no greater love. You must take up the cross like Jesus did. He had his doubts, Ask God to give him strength to get through the ordeal. He knew he was going to face on the cross. It wasn't easy for Jesus. It won't be easy for us either. But Christ showed us the way. Sometimes I feel like I'm one of the apostles who couldn't stay up and watch while Jesus was in the garden. I barely made it to the 8 o'clock service too because I was tired <laughs> from my partying the night before. Or like Peter who denied Christ three times. I, as Peter, am imperfect and have my bad days, but I am reminded that Jesus forgives me. That is the point of the way of the cross. In the parable of the single grain, Jesus takes on the burden of death. He knows it. He knows he's going to die. He's going to suffer. He gives us a challenge, which sometimes is very hard to meet. Whoever serves me must follow me. Yet, his promise of bearing fruit is kept in the resurrection. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. I, you, everyone, the sinners, is giving a chance to eternal life despite all of the sins that I may have committed, you may have committed, and you will commit because we will still be sinners. I tell the shop customers, thank God for general confession. Otherwise, I would be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and if Peter, our patron saint, 
the most imperfect man that you have ever read about or will read about. Knowing he was, he saw Jesus, he encountered him, he knew him, he saw him in the flesh. But yet, when it came to the moment, he denied him three times. So if Peter could have done that, then there's hope for not only myself, but there's hope for all of us. Amen.